Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having an awesome day. Y'all, let's do some more fun, feel good crafting. Stay tuned. So I'm sure that you guys notice something looks a little bit different about my desk. It's my mat. I'm actually working from my backyard today. And because I took my old mat with me when I moved over to my new studio, I decided I would get a new mat for my home studio. And this one I found on Amazon. I absolutely love it because it's double sided. One side is blue, one side is green. And if I'm going to be spending some time working in my home studio, which I do intend to do because I miss my backyard, I thought, okay, if I have to get a mat, I want to get something that is a little bit different from what I had before. Not that there was anything wrong with my mat because there's not, I'll use it in my offsite studio. But here at home, I thought I'd change it up just a little bit. So I went on a hunt and I found this great mat. And we're going to use this mat today to make something pretty awesome. And you guys know that we have made a couple of bows on the channel. Well, today we are going to introduce another bow into the mix. And this one is oh so easy to make. We have a large multi-loop bow. So we've got several layers to this absolutely fabulous bow. And then on the back of our bow, we're going to cover the mechanics with the sweet little tail that we will be able to make. And guys, you can make one bow with the tails and have some left over from one sheet of 12 by 12 paper. So that is exactly what we're going to be using on this project. So for the bow that I'm going to be making with y'all, I decided I would go with this red polka dot. So here's what we're going to need to make our bow. You are going to need 16 pieces of one by six strips. So you will need 16 one by six strips. And then you're going to need two pieces of scrap and you'll see where these come into play. So I would probably start with scrap pieces that are at least two and a half by two and a half. And so the first thing that we're going to do with our strips is we're going to go ahead and curl all of them. And I am just curling these so that we can go ahead and get the start of our loops. And so I have three that I'm going to do with you guys, but I have already done the other 13. So once we have our strips arched like this, I am going to take my glue and just basically fold over just like this. And you're going to have a loop that looks like this. So I am going to hold that until it catches and then we'll do the other two. And if you want to guys, you can also use hot glue on this project. I'm using my reptile glue because I will be punching a hole later and I don't want to have to worry about trying to go through all of those layers of loops that happen to have hot glue. So now I'm just going to use my spatula just to help that glue to catch. And then we'll do our last one. So again, just take it and join the two sides. And you are going to have a loop that looks like this. And this is actually my first time filming with this blue mat in my home studio. And I actually like the way that it looks probably because it's so clean but as you guys know I craft heavy and I don't spend a whole lot of time worrying about 
how my mat looks because it is a working mat and this one eventually will probably look like the others but for right now it looks pretty doggone good okay so now that we have our loops like this what we are going to do to all of our loops is we are going to just come in and cut an angle just like that so I'll do it on this side as well and we're basically cutting our loops so that we can have a point like this you don't have to worry about oh my sides aren't even my angle is a little bit crooked that's not going to be an issue just as long as you have a point that you can use later in our project so I am just going to do this one and now we have our loops all right guys so I have all 16 of my loops joined together and angled to a point because we want it to look like this so that it'll be easier for us to mount it so I am going to just bring in one of my squares and I am going to take that square if you have a circle punch you can use the circle punch just to give yourself a circle and so I am going to trim this just a little bit smaller all right guys so if you happen to have a two inch circle punch that is approximately the size that I'm going to start with and the way that we're going to do this is I am going to bring in my glue and we are going to place some glue right there but then I'm also going to place glue like that because I want to make sure my ends get stuck and I am going to bring my point to the center and then I am going to hold it until it sticks then I'll rotate it to this side and I'm going to do the same thing so I'm going to take some glue and I can just go ahead and place that glue all the way around and I'll bring that point in so that it is facing that one and then I'll grab my next loop and I'm going to turn it and I'm going to place this loop down so that I position it in between those two and then I'll just take my fourth one and place it down just like that and now we are starting to build our bow so when I place these I'm coming in between where I have those gaps so I am going to take my glue place glue right there just tuck a little bit in there as well and I'll take this one and I'm going to place it down just like that and I'm going to hold it so that it catches that paper you might have to pick it up because as you start building these layers you'll definitely have to come back in and just kind of smooth it down and I'm just going to take this piece go on the inside just to make sure we've got that stuck and then I'll take this one another one of my loops and I'm going to place some glue right in there and I'll take this piece and now I'm going to place it across from where I placed down the last piece so basically what I'm doing is I am just going in and filling in my blanks and then I'll take two more I'm going to add some glue right in there take my final two and I'm going to place one here and one there just to fill in those gaps so I'm going to take that piece press it down and I'll let it dry before I place the final piece so then we're going to take our final loop on this level and we're going to place it down right here where we have this opening so I rolled it around so that I could place it from this side because it's just easier for me and I'm going to place that down just like that and when you start making these loopy bows you are going to realize just how easy they are 
and just how well you can customize them to fit whatever it is you need for it to be. And you know what else you're going to realize? You're going to realize that you don't need to go back to the store to ever buy another bow. So now that we have eight loops down, we are going to take that last piece of scrap and we're going to cut it down to a smaller circle. So this one will not be that large at all. As a matter of fact, I am going to make it probably about an inch and a half. Let me take it and place it inside. So when I place it, I am going to place it in just like that and I will be smooshing down these. So I am going to use my glue and I am going to be very generous because I want to make sure that I get this stuck down. So I am going to take it, place it in the center right there and smush it down. And I'm going to just hold it in place until it sets up. All right guys, so now that we have our second circle in, we can now start placing more loops. So I am just going to place glue on the back and I'm going to go ahead and place just a little bit of glue on the backs of four of these. Because we're going to use all four on this step. So we're going to take these and now we're just going to start building it by placing down four and we're going to place these four just as we placed the first four. We're going to take our loop and you can see that I placed that loop right here. So now I'll take my second loop and when I place it down, I'm going to place it down so that the point is opposite the first loop. And then I'm just going to hold these into place. So now that I have these two down, I am going to take these two and place them opposite. So I have these two that I have placed this way. I'm going to take these two and place them in just like that. So basically what you're doing is whenever you're placing down a layer of loops, you're placing them down so that you're creating like a plus sign with your loops. And you're going to notice that as you continue to layer them, then your loop is going to start lifting up and it's going to get so pretty. So I am just going to hold these in place and I'll show you guys a little trick. So as you start building up the layer, your loops are really, like I said before, going to start raising up. And you might want to take something that has like a roundness to it, like this cap. And I'm just holding that on the inside so that I can get my loops pressed down. Okay guys, so I have all 12 of my loops on my bow. And you can see that I have a nice fluffy bow now what I'm going to do is I have this little half inch circle that I have punched out and I'm just going to tuck it down on the inside here just to make sure that I have all of my loops nicely sandwiched in between glue and paper and that way they will not come up. So you guys are seeing my glue right now. But those of you who have used reptile glue, you know that this glue is going to dry clear and we are going to have a very beautiful, beautiful bow. So I am just punching that down and it'll get nice and stuck. I'm going to give that a chance to dry and then we'll add our decorative brad. And so while that's drying, I am going to go ahead and just punch my hole for the bread and what I'm using is my paper piercer because that's the easiest way for me to go through this. So all I'm doing is just driving that through all of these layers and coming out the other side just like that. And now I can take it out and I'll have my little hole right there on the inside and I am going to use some of these Echo Park brads these brads were actually purchased from Tuesday morning, maybe three or four years ago. I can't remember, but it's been a while on these. 
So I am going to take this bread and just put it through that hole, bring it out the other side, and then I'm just going to open it just like that. And now you can see on the inside what a really sweet little bow we have here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out some tails. So I am going to bring my scoreboard back in and I am going to cut out a one by 12 inch piece and you will have scrap left over from when you make the bow so you'll be able to use some of that scrap to make the tails. Then I'm going to cut that tail into two one by six inch pieces. So we start with the one by 12. We reduce that to two one by six inch pieces. I am going to hold them together just like this. Cut in from the edge. Come over to this side and cut in from the edge to create those little tails. And now I can take these and place them on the back so that I can cover up that bread. And how you place them is truly, totally up to you. So I am just going to take my glue, place my glue right along the top. And when I'm placing it, I'm just gonna have it looking at me like this so that I can see where I actually want to place the tail. And I'm feeling just to make sure that I'm covering the back. And then I'll take my second one and I'm going to add my glue to that one. And now I'm going to cover it just like that. And you know what guys, you can really make these for any reason, any season, any gender. And this is a wonderful beginning to a chest corsage. Let's say it's the birthday person. You can build a birthday corsage with this as the base and then just put a whole bunch of other cute things in it. Or if it's a baby shower, whether it's Zoom or in person, however it is you guys are doing it, you can also make this for the new mom, for the new grandmother-to-be, and you can customize it for each person at the event who needs something to stand out because the event somehow is truly about them or for them. So many different ways that you can make these wonderful, sweet, loopy little bows. And you can see how gorgeous this bow is. So in the beginning, I said that you were gonna need 16 loops it was actually 12 loops. I don't know why my mind was stuck on 16 and I kept saying it over and over and over, but it's 12 loops. So my beautiful red polka dot bow is all complete and I think it is just so wonderful, guys. It is so cute, so easy to make, and I am going to bring in the other two so that y'all can see all of this crafty goodness from these easy peasy wonderful paper bows and for those of you who have loads of ribbon you can also make these with ribbon but as y'all know i specialize in paper so i'm going to make mine with paper but you can certainly use ribbon if you want these are so easy and you guys just saw how easy they are to make again i misquoted and said you need 16 loops you need 12 loops and you can have a bow that looks like any one of these three. Now, when you have a bow that looks this cute, you definitely want something really, really cute to put it on. We're going to make a nice little bag for this bow. So I have these two pieces of cardstock that measure 12 by 12, and I want this to be my outside because I love this buffalo plaid reindeer on here. So I am going to bring in my stylus and I am going to place it in on the 12 inch side and I am going to score at three and a half. And then I'm going to come over and score at 11. 
Then I'm going to rotate it to the opposite 12 inch side and I'm going to score at three and a half. Rotate it to the opposite 12 inch side of that three and a half and score at three and a half again. Then I'll bring in my second sheet and I am going to do the same thing. So I'm going to place it in, make a score at three and a half, and then I'm going to make a score at 11. Then I'll rotate it to the unscored 12 inch side and we're going to score at three and a half. And I'm going to rotate it to the opposite side of that three and a half inch score we made and score at three and a half again. And one thing that I forgot to do that I always do first is make my handle. I have already made one and I'm going to go ahead and make the next one with you guys. So I have a piece that measures two by 12 and all I'm doing is folding it into thirds. I am not placing it in my scoreboard, but you can if you want. I am just going to eyeball this and basically use my first one as the guide. So I'll position it just like that. And then I can fold up until the two are even. And you should make your handles first so that the glue that you're using will set up and harden. You can lessen the possibility of having your paper crease. So I am going to take my glue, place it on one of my flaps and fold this over. And then I'll do the same thing here. And then once I have my flaps folded over, I am just going to use my spatula to spread the glue and to create a curve to my handle so that while we're building the bag, the handle will have a chance to set up and harden. So you can see that I have two curved handles. I am going to take these and just set them off to the side. And we're going to bring back in the two pieces that we've already scored and we are going to fold and burnish those scores and it is going to be some easy peasy crafting y'all okay so once we have all of our scores folded and burnished on one piece only we're going to remove the two large corner pieces so i am just going to go up to that score mark drag straight down and cut in this direction to remove it. And then on this piece, I am also going to bring in my ruler and I am going to reduce this side. So I am going to bring my ruler in here and I don't want all of this on the sides because I'll have two layers that I'll have to fold in and that's not what I want. So I am simply going to reduce this to about three quarters of an inch so that I will have glue flaps. And I'll do the same thing over here. And so then you're going to have these two little rectangles right here in the corner. We are going to go ahead and just cut those out completely. And then I'm just going to take this piece. I don't want that contrasting paper on the outside. I'm going to take this and just fold it in just like that. And so now we're going to have this piece. So I'll bring in my second piece and I'm going to set that one off to the side. What we're going to do here 
is we are not going to remove this bottom piece and we're not going to cut down this way. So you've got this narrow flap here and you've got the wider flaps here. This is the bottom. We won't be cutting down, we'll be cutting out. So I'm going to turn it to the side and just go to that score mark and drag straight out and then I'll angle just a little bit and I'll come to this side and do the same thing. And I'll angle. And so now we're going to have this. What I'm going to do here at the top is we are not going to remove any of this, but I am going to free up the tab because it's just going to make it easier for me to fold that over. So I'm going to take my glue and on the center section only at this point, I'll place my glue, fold that piece in, and now we can put our bag together. So the way that we're going to put the bag together, we're going to take this piece and just place it right on the inside, inside of the score marks. And what I'm going to do is I am just going to remove just a little bit from the ends because that's going to make it just a little bit easier for me to wedge that in. And so now it'll go in very nicely. And I removed it because as I was laying it down, I could see where I hadn't quite cut even and a little of mine was hanging over. That might not be the case for you, but always do your test fit here. And if you notice that it's too wide, just trim off a little bit. So now I can take my glue and I'm going to place my glue on this piece. And I'm going to place enough glue so that we can make sure that this stays stuck. And so I'm going to put it down so that it is inside of my score marks. Then I'll flip it over and just get it nice and stuck. And so now that we have it like this, I am just going to reduce those side panels just a little bit. And this is what you'll have. So we're going to take these pieces and I am going to go ahead and just place some glue all over it because we're going to need it there anyway. And I'll bring this piece up and I'm just going to join it just like that. And so now I can take my glue place it on this piece and bring this piece up, joining it to this and connecting it to this one. And when you're joining it, you want to make sure that you've got the top nice and even because you can fix the bottom if it happens to be too long. So now I can go on the inside with my big old spatula and get everything nice and stuck. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. So I'll take my glue and I'm going to place my glue on that flap and we'll take this piece and we're going to fold it in to the flap just like that. And now we can place glue on the glue flap and we're going to make sure that when we're matching, we are matching from the top. And so then I'm going to take my ruler, and just go on the inside. And so then I am going to take my ruler, go on the inside and get it stuck. Now I'll take my glue and I'm going to place my glue on these flaps. And now I can fold these in just like that. So I'll get that nice and stuck and I'll do the same thing on this one. And we'll get it stuck. So the reason why I reduced one side of these down to that three quarters of an inch is because when we fold it, it's a lot easier to fold and go through one layer of paper 
versus two layers. So all I'm doing at this point is just pinching and I'm going down as far as I want. And now y'all can see that I have a very cute little bag and we're going to take our handles and go ahead and just place those handles on our bag. And my, oh my, this is going to be cute. So I am just placing some wet glue. You can do this with hot glue. I am taking this and I am going to just place it on the inside wherever I want it. And I'll hold this until it actually sets. I'm going to lay it down just to make sure I've got them nice and even on the inside. And if you want guys, you can place brads on these. You can do all sorts of things that you might want to do to dress them up. But I truly do love these little plaid reindeer. I think that they are just super, super cute. So I am going to bring in my second handle. We are going to take our glue, place the glue on that handle. And we're going to get this stuck. So I am placing it on the inside making sure that I've got it matched to the first one that I put down. All right, guys, so we have both of our handles on the bag and the bag is gorgeous, even without a bow on it. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to add a bow because that bow is going to take this and just really elevate the crafty cuteness. And don't be afraid to put a big bow on a small package because it's just like a small room. You always wanna place a large piece of furniture in that room because it makes it look bigger. So we're going to take some glue, place it on the back here, and then we're going to place this down on our bag. And I am just going to place it here in the corner and just sort of offset it just like this. And we're going to give it a chance to dry and then we are going to just fall in love with this gorgeous and this sweet sweet bag so here we have it guys we took our paper bows made a wonderful bag for this and this bag when finished measures five across three and a half inches deep and seven and a half inches high. So this is yet another bag size that you can add to your growing, growing bag collection that you can make at home and you can stop going to the store and buying bags because now you're going to go to your craft space and make them. Not only are you going to make the bags, but you're going to make the bows as well. So here are the other two bows that we have. And you can see just how gorgeous, 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 gorgeous these are. So guys, I hope that you are getting a lot of wonderful ideas on ways that you can do packaging for any season, any reason, any gender. There is absolutely no reason why this particular bag right here is not suitable for a man as well as a woman. So I hope that you have liked this video. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.